The next big task on my list is to pay attention to the outdrive. It needs to be repainted. The anodes need to be changed. So the painting process goes like this. I'm first going to do some sanding. I'm going to remove any loose paint, any loose chips, and get it sanded to a fairly smooth surface. The next thing I'm going to do is cover up the items I don't want to get painted, like the stickers for the outdrive and the boat itself. Finally, I'm going to prime and then paint the outdrive with at least two coats. This boat has something called a Bravo 3 drive. It has two propellers that counter rotate and they're made out of stainless steel. When I purchased the boat, it already had some damage, so I'm going to remove the props. The first thing is I need to stop the counter rotating propellers from turning. I do that by placing a propeller in between here. It's going to just kind of wedge itself. So uh, even if it slips out, I'm going to keep my fingers clear so I don't run the risk of, of being hurt. Uh, I don't care if the 2x4 gets hurt. Second thing is, sockets are great. They're not that strong. It's very easy for you to put enough torque to damage these internal components. There's something else you want to use for a task like this. I use something called the breaker bar. These things are inexpensive if they break. There's no socketing action. Uh, the only reason I'm using a socket set is because I own a socket of the size for this. So with that, I'm going to put it on here. And I'm able to remove this big bolt. And the nut is now inside the socket. Well, this second nut is much larger. I believe it's about two and a half inches. And I can't find my channel locks that fits this nut. So I made a post on a Facebook group called Boating on Lake Winnebago, which is a large lake close to where I live. And another member of the group named Greg stepped forward and offered for me to borrow his tool. Here it is. <laughs> it's pretty large and it's got the opening the correct size for removing this nut. Well, you can see this out drive needs some work. I've already purchased new sacrificial anodes, so I'm going to do this by hand. The goal is to seal the out drive to stop it from corroding and also improve the aesthetics. Well, it's really late at night. I'm just showing an in-between step on the outdrive. I've got it sanded, then I ran over it with a chemical that cleans the surface. Then I taped off what I don't want painted, and I've got the primer applied. Now I need to wait for the primer to dry before I do the first coat of paint. By the way, I'm not using a spray gun. I'm using Quicksilver phantom black paint. This is the Mercury Marine recommended paint and you just shake the can until the ball breaks loose. Continue to shake it for a minute or two and then start spraying it on. Well it's early in the morning of day two. Uh, just under an hour after applying the primer coat I applied the first coat of Mercury black phantom paint I now need to wait at least 24 hours for this to fully dry and then I can apply coat two. All right, just talking about this a little bit more. There's different ways to do this process. The best way would be to buy a new outdrive and a new outdrive would cost about $12,000. That's a lot of money for a boat I spent $15,000 purchasing. Um, the second option would be to have everything removed and have it soda blasted and that would get me over a thousand dollar bill. This is a do-it-yourself job. All in I bought a can of primer, three cans of paint, some tape, some newspapers I had laying around, some elbow grease and for about fifty dollars I've got this thing reasonably good given its its age and condition. So if you notice I've also removed the props. I did some experimenting with retouching up the looks of the props. 
Um, they had two minor, minor dings. The dings were in the shape of a crescent, not bigger than a fingernail clipping once you cut it off your fingernail. Pretty minor damage to the props. Uh, unfortunately, prop shops have a one price policy. I actually uh, talked to a prop shop and they wanted about $280 to touch up that one little ding. I decided I could do it myself after watching some YouTube videos. Um, basically, you make sure you're never rounding the corner. You're filing on the side, you're filing on the top, you're filing on the bottom, keeping that edge very true. And um, it turned out quite well. Uh, I did a little overkill, just waxing it when I was done. Uh, once I remove all this tape, I am going to change the anodes. The anodes will be in good condition, the drive will be sealed. The props will be clean, and then I'm going to add this additional anode in the back. It's an accessory that came along as someone figured out these more vintage Bravo drives didn't have enough anodes. The newest ones add a second anode in the cavitation plate and this prop anode. You can't add the anode to the cavitation plate, but you can certainly add the prop anode. Uh, it doesn't look as good as a brand new outdrive, but it... it turned out quite well. I'm, I'm quite happy with the appearance. There's several ways you can go with restoring your outdrive. I put some photographs of my work in progress on a website called Club Sea Ray and it got a lot of different opinions. So I'm not here to say the way I'm doing it is the way that's the only way, nor am I saying it's the best way. I'm just saying it's the way that I chose to seal up and protect my outdrive. So the first step is removing these propellers. I was very fortunate. I posted to a local boating group and was able to borrow this tool from a person named Greg. Uh, I've actually since found some tools that will work similar to this on eBay and have them on order and they cost me about 60 bucks. And you got to stop the props from spinning. So you need to support the propellers like this so as you're turning the nut the propellers don't come off. The next step is I needed to clean up the outdrive. Now it doesn't actually rust, it does something called corrode. And I used sandpaper in my hand and a lot of elbow grease and a lot of scrubbing. I did not get the outdrive down to a smooth surface. To do that when it's pitted, it requires some pretty sophisticated fill. That's beyond what I wanted to do. I wanted to seal up the outdrive, stop the corrosion, and make it look reasonably good aesthetically. So sand it up. Once I sanded it up, I used something called 216, which is a solvent, and towels, and I cleaned the surface. Got the surface nice and clean so no little loose pieces of dirt or paint were on the outdrive. Then I came along with some newspaper, some tape, and I taped up everything I wasn't intending to paint, like the stickers, the boat itself, my trailer, uh, any of the areas that I did not want to be black. Then I put on a single can, a shaker can of primer. I'm using light gray primer from Quicksilver. That's uh, number 9280-2878-Q52. I actually bought the primer and two cans of paint on eBay, these three in a package for $23. After the primer dried, I put on eventually two coats of paint, and it took me about a can and a half per coat. The paint's all the same, and that's a uh, Phantom Black Enamel Spray Paint, also made by Quicksilver. And you just follow the instructions on the can and let it dry for 24 hours between coats. Then there's two different philosophies on what to do with the spline, the part that the propellers attach to. Uh, one philosophy is to leave them dry. One philosophy is to load them with grease. I'm not here to argue or tell you what to do, only again say what I do. Uh, there used to be a lot of different greases that Mercury had. They've since come up with something called High Performance Extreme Grease. It's used for a variety of situations and one of those situations is for this application. So I use this and liberally put it Put my hand in a Ziploc baggie so you don't get your hand up full of grease. Put the grease on the splines and then spread it around and that way your hand stays clean. Slid the props on, 
used the tool and reinstalled the nuts. Then I changed something called the anodes. The anodes are these sacrificial metallic components that are connected or bonded to the outdrive. The theory is they're less noble or more likely to corrode than the aluminum. And if you touch the two together, the corrosion goes to the sacrificial anodes and they sacrifice themselves, allowing the aluminum outdrive to survive. It does mean you need to keep the anodes fresh and fairly clean, scraping off the surface, and they don't do a perfect job. Uh, Mercury has come up with something called the Merc cathode system that this boat has, a little electronic gadget that's very tough to test and know if it's actually still working. Um, in addition to the four factory anodes that came with this, and yes, this is black. I didn't cover it up because I knew I was going to be changing it. It should be this, this uh, magnesium color. But uh, in addition to these four, this one goes under the capitation plate, and right about here. Um, the newer Bravo 3 outdrives actually have two of these in that location. There's no way for me to add it, so I put fresh anodes on. And then I added one additional anode right here. And there's a kit from a company named Boat Zincs. You pick zinc if you're in salt water, magnesium if you're in fresh water, or some situations call for an aluminum anode. That gets more complex, um, might be for brackish water or certain water that has certain contaminants. I know in my local area, the marina uses magnesium, which is traditionally what you use in fresh water. Also, boats I've owned in the past, I used magnesium with good luck. So I stayed with magnesium and I did order this additional center prop anode. It does come with a special new nut so the first time is a bit spendy. All these other anodes cost 23 bucks. This one, the first time, costs an additional $80. And it's gonna be a lot cheaper in the future because I no longer have to buy that special new nut that allows this anode to attach to it. In the future, I can just buy the anode itself, which brings the price back down to 23 bucks. So that is what I've done. The outdrive has now been sanded, cleaned, primed, and two coats of paint. There's fresh anodes on the outdrive. The props have been polished. The additional anode has been added. And I'm comfortable that being a trailer boater, this is the right way to go for me. Other options would have included completely removing the outdrive as well as the bell housing, having it professionally soda blasted, having it professionally painted in a paint shop, Unless you're pulling your engine and having things removed for other reasons, you're looking at spending well over $1,000 to $1,500 to do that. The most expensive option is to get a whole new outdrive. The best way to do that is to do nothing and not care for it. Eventually, your corrosion actually will cause the oil to leak out, and in which case, there's just no way to repair it. You need to spend twelve grand and get a new outdrive and bell housing. That's the worst alternative. I'm comfortable with what I've done just recognizing that it's not the only approach I could have taken. I hope you found this video helpful. How about you? How do you care for your stern drive? What steps do you use? What did I do that you would have done differently? Please subscribe and follow along as we bring this 15-year-old boat that had been in long-term storage back to life and then go on boating adventures.